Christian was a pilgrim on a dangerous journey to the celestial city. Although his good friend Faithful had been killed by the men of Vanity Fair, God allowed Christian to escape. But he did not travel alone, for a man named Hopeful left Vanity Fair as well and became his companion. And so one man died for his faith and another came forward to take his place. The way that Christian and Hopeful had to walk was rocky and their feet ached. They did not stop to rest, although they did wish they could find an easier road. Now on the left-hand side of the way was a little path that went through a soft, thick meadow called Bypath Meadow. Christian walked over to it and looked around. It will be much easier walking through this meadow, he said to Hopeful. But what if that path should lead us out of the way? That's not likely. Look, it runs in the same direction as the way we are on now. And so he persuaded Hopeful to go along with him. They had to climb over a fence to get into the meadow. But once there, they found it much easier on their feet. Up ahead, they saw another man walking along the path. They did not know it, but his name was vain confidence. They called out to him and said, Where does this path lead? And he called back, To heaven's gate! See, Christian said, I told you we were going in the right direction. But behold, the night came on, and because vain confidence could no longer see what was in front of him, he fell into a deep pit and landed so hard that his bones were broken. Christian and Hopeful heard him fall. They called out to him, but this time the only answer was the sound of groaning. Where are we now? Hopeful asked. But Christian did not answer. He knew that he had led his friend away from the celestial city. And then it began to rain and thunder. Lightning flashed all around them. The water rose so quickly that the path was flooded. Oh, that I had stayed on the way! Who would have thought that this pleasant path would have taken us so far from our way? Christian said. I am sorry that I have led you into so much danger, my brother. We must get back again. But by now, the floodwaters had risen so high that the pilgrims nearly drowned trying to return to the way. It is always much easier to leave the right way than it is to find it again. Finally, they gave up, and coming to a place where the ground was high enough to keep them out of the water, they fell asleep, thinking that they would be safe. But they were wrong. The ground on which the pilgrims were sleeping belonged to one giant despair, who was the master of Doubting Castle. And the next morning, as he was out for his walk, he saw Christian and Hopeful sleeping in his field. Wake up! Where have you come from? What are you doing on my grounds? We... we are pilgrims, and we lost our way last night in the rain. You are trespassers trampling down my fields! Come with me! The giant then pushed them along in front of him and brought them to Doubting Castle. He threw them into a dark, stinking dungeon and left them there from Wednesday morning until Saturday night without even a piece of bread or a drop of water.
Now, Giant Despair had a wife named Diffidence. One night, while they were sitting up in bed, he told her about his prisoners and how he had thrown them into the dungeon for trespassing on his grounds. Then he asked her what he should do with them. When you wake up in the morning, she said, you must beat them without mercy. And then she blew out the light and went to sleep. The next morning, Giant Despair cut a big branch from a crab tree, went down into the dungeon and beat Christian and Hopeful until all they could do was lay on the floor and cry. That night, the giant told his wife about what he had done. Tomorrow morning, tell them to kill themselves because they have no hope of ever escaping. And so, in the morning, he went back down into the dungeon and gave the pilgrims a knife, a noose, and a bottle of poison. Choose whichever one you like. The only way you will ever get out of this dungeon is to kill yourself. Please, sir, please set us free. Set you free? Why? I'll kill you right now, right where you are. The giant rushed at the pilgrims and would have killed them, except that he suddenly fell into one of his fits. He started coughing and became so weak that he could not even move his arm. He had just enough strength to stumble back out of the dungeon. Even though the giant was very strong, the sunlight sometimes caused him to have fits. Now that they were alone again, the pilgrims had to decide whether or not they would listen to the giant and kill themselves. Brother, what should we do? Christian asked. I would rather be dead than in this dungeon. So would I, replied Hopeful. But the Lord has said, you shall not murder. And so we must not listen to giant despair and murder ourselves. Have you forgotten that the Bible says no murderer has eternal life? Besides, Giant despair does not control everything. Who knows but that God may cause him to die, or that one day he will forget to lock us in, or fall into another of his fits. Be patient, my brother. We may yet escape, but we must not murder ourselves. Well, on Saturday, about midnight, they began to pray and continued praying until almost daylight. What a fool I am, Christian said, jumping to his feet. I had forgotten about the key that is right here in my pocket. This key is called Promise, and I am sure that it will open any lock in Doubting Castle. He tried the key on the dungeon door and it flew open with ease. Then they both went to the door that leads into the castle yard and opened that one as well. Last of all, they came to the large iron gate. It was very hard, but they managed to turn the lock with their key. But that gate made such a creaking noise as they slowly pushed it open that it woke the giant. He jumped from bed, dashed out into the courtyard, and then he fell into one of his fits. And that is how the pilgrims escaped from Doubting Castle.